sick or even dying from the heat, but what do you do when your kids want to go outside and play, go to camp, enjoy their summer activities when it is so, so hot outside? For that, we turn to pediatrician Dr. Lauren Crosby. By the way, she is also a spokes official spokesperson for the American Academy of Pediatrics. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Marla. We love your expertise. Let's start off. It's hot outside. Your kids want to go out and play. How do you gauge if it's a good time for them to go out or not? Well, you want to check the temperature. So if it's 90 degrees or more, that's really not advised to be out running around. You also want to look at the time of day. So it's hottest between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. And I always tell people, your kids are up early, run them around now and tire them out, and then they could come inside and watch a movie and cool off and play games and do things. Um, also, it stays light out late when it's cooler, so you can also get out and do things then. But you want to get them, if it's not so, so hot, but it's hot out, you want to make sure they hydrate. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure they're urinating at least every three hours, and they're drinking pretty much hourly. You, may, you can't trust their thirst. Have them wear hats, find shade, get them wet. You know, water play. Well, speaking of water, mm -hmm. what about the importance of electrolytes? This is something that I drink. This is a segment about kids, though. This pr Propel comes with electrolytes. Mm -hmm. How important is it that parents be getting their kids to drink electrolytes for hydration? You know, we really recommend water most of the time. Unless you have a kid who is an athlete and they're playing out in the heat and they have no choice, you want, that's when that would come in more. Or if you really find that they're not eating and they really haven't had that much to drink or they're not urinating, it might be a good time to give them something. And, you know, for kids, you know, we tend to recommend other versions of electrolyte solutions, but there are some that we'll recommend for kids too. But mostly they still water and, you know, other fluids that they drink like milk, it's fluid, so, and they'll get protein and some nutrition. Okay. What about alternatives? If it's just too hot out, mm -hmm. but we need some activity, mm -hmm. what, what can kids do? So find, like, even earlier on the show, we were talking about indoor places, and there are places that different cities have to help people stay cool. You can go to indoor mall. You can go to a movie, depending on COVID and how you're feeling about that. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> movies are, good, are a good place to go. Also, to libraries. Because you can go to the library and you can look at books and they're, they're meant for that. And right. the city actually encourages that. So indoors and find, find your shade and hang out in the pool. Heat exhaustion, heat stroke can be a problem even for the little ones. Mm -hmm. What signs should parents be looking out for? Yeah. And then, when do you call the doctor? Yeah, you know, when do we call you? Well, you know, it's interesting. I was actually, it was October and it was unusually hot here. And I was at my kid's Halloween outdoor event and I saw a kid get passed out. It was like and the kid had a, a fever, but we actually think it was because they were were actually dehydrated and they were in a hot costume oh, in the sun at, at the carnival. So, the, so heat exhaustion is not heat stroke. Heat stroke is 106 fever. Mm -hmm. You're going to the hospital. You can't move. You're like unconscious. You're out or close to it. And then as far as heat exhaustion, there's muscle aches. There may be nausea and vomiting, headache, mm -hmm. um, and muscle cramps and lethargy and and extreme thirst okay so it, they need to get into the cool and hydrate right away okay well you mentioned covid earlier obviously we know that it's still out there for kids if parents are hesitant about sending their kids to camp should they be hesitant about that now that we're in summertime it's so hard but kids need camp i love camp for kids it's so important for their mental health physical health creativity, socialization. So if you are going to look at it, I think day camps that are outdoors are fine. We, I, I want all the kids to be vaccinated. Pretty much any age can get vaccinated now, so there's really no reason not to. That will help protect other people as well as your child from getting severe disease and hospitalization. Um, their sleepaway camps are still wonderful for kids, but you know, I, I've been reached out to by parents in my practice because their kids are got COVID at camp and they're putting all the kids who have COVID like in the same cabin. So at least they're cohorting them together so they're not alone. Like they used to pull them and everyone had to be alone and isolated. So at least they can have people to talk to while they yeah. get through it uh, together. So it's almost like a kid at the camp bonding, even though I wish it didn't happen. I think kids should, the camp should test more. Uh -huh. So I think just that one test before they get like, to get there, right? It's not enough. Because we know that you can be negative on Monday and positive on Tuesday, or even Monday night, you could be positive. I think that first week would be great so you could pull kids out before they really have a chance to invite everybody. You mentioned vaccinations mm -hmm. for kids. We know that those rates aren't as high as you would like. Yeah. What do you say to hesitant parents? You know, we, we talk about it a lot. We talk about it every day, especially now that our office got approved to give the six months up to five-year-olds. So we actually are doing that, and we were so happy when our first clinic actually completely filled up 
two Wednesdays ago. So we're doing Wednesdays and Saturdays. I talk to other families, a lot of them who know me really well, my own patients, if I say yes, they do it. So they'll ask me and they go, should we do it? And they know I'm very pro-vaccination anyway, but I say, yes, you should, because you don't want your kids in the hospital. You don't want your baby in the ICU. You don't want the child to necessarily give it to somebody else. If there, it's less viral load if you're vaccinated. You're not as sick if you're vaccinated. So there's a lot of reasons to do it to keep those kids safe. Kids have gotten very, very sick. Right. Uh, I want to just end with your thoughts on the endemic phase of the pandemic. Are we there yet? Mm -mm, no, no. Endemic would not be these crazy surges where now we're actually starting to see hospitalizations rise again. Mm -hmm. LA County is considering in the next couple of weeks putting the mask mandate back for indoors. So endemic would be at a much lower level than what we're seeing right now. So although other counties that do have high transmission are not reinstating the indoor mask mandate, you do think it's best if LA County does because that looks like it's going to be happening. I think it'll be a good idea for indoor crowded places just yeah, to help do, the transmission. Just to slow it down again. Yeah, we don't want the hospitals overwhelmed. The, the ER visits are already starting mm -hmm. to go up yeah. and hospitalizations too. Okay, yeah. well, thank you so much for your time and your insight. Yeah. Dr. Lauren Crosby, pediatrician, always a pleasure. Thanks, Marla.